Good morning to you. Praise God. Happy holidays to all of you, my father's children. This is Apostle Sean Simpson, and I want to say to you, God bless you and God keep you. Today, we're going to study the fivefold ministry. And a surprising of the Sunday school lesson is about the fivefold ministry. We are going to Ephesians chapter 4, beginning with the first uh, through the 16th verse. The theme is United We Stand. But I want to talk to you real close on this. I want you to be real clear about this. With the fivefold ministry, we come together as one. We come together as one. The Bible teaches us that there are certain telltale signs for the believer. We're still dealing with the early church proclaims faith in Christ. Faith to unite is the commentary. And let us approach the word of God with prayer. Father, even now in the name of Jesus. First of all, Lord, I repent of all sin, transgression, and evil in my word and my deeds. Pleading the blood of Jesus over my life, Lord God. Everyone that hears this word, Lord God, Grant us forgiveness and have mercy upon us, Lord, even now. I thank you that as I speak, I speak as the oracles of God. As I minister, I minister according to the ability which you have given me. And Lord, I thank you that your word is life to them that find it. Thank you for life in your word. The word says, Behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. And Father, thank you that everything I say will be according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God which was committed to my choice. And I thank you for the anointing to teach this lesson. I thank you for the anointing to move burdens and destroy yokes. I thank you that every hear will receive an impartation of your spirit. I thank you, Lord, that we not be hearers of the word only, but doers also. And therefore, Lord God, let us eat the good of the land. He said, if we are willing and obedient, we shall eat the good of the land. Father, he said, be faithful and get rid of the faithful church. For you always have a faithful one in your church. Let us study your word to show themselves approved unto you, Lord God. Workmen that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of the truth. Help us, God. Amen. The scripture. From Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. And the word of the Lord says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation, vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit. In the bond of peace. Now those first three verses are the golden text of this letter. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace 
to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he says, when he ascended upon high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto many. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heaven that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we call come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. May we henceforth be no, no more children tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, for whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supply according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body to the edifying of itself in love. Now, the devotional reading coming from Psalm 68, Psalm 68. Verses 1 through 6, 15 through 20, and 32 to 35. You read that on your own time. But if we understand Ephesians 4, these first 16 verses, they teach us about the unity of the spirit, the unity of the body, and the oneness of God, and the oneness of the church. Many members, one body. Paul writes to the Ephesians. And if you are a minister, this should apply to you. It applies, it applies to all of us who are ministers of the gospel. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. What is that calling? The calling to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. With all lowliness and meekness, that means humility. With long suffering, patience, forbearing one another in love. That means everything works with love. Faith worketh by love. Everything in the kingdom works by love. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. The Lord Jesus said, Peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. Why? Because He is Yahweh Shalom. He is our perfect peace. The Lord is peace. The Lord is peace. And one of the characters or the fruit of the Spirit. And he deals with three or four of the fruit of the spirit lowliness and meekness, long suffering, and love. There is one body, First Corinthians chapter 12 teaches us about. The body of Christ. One body. Many members. Baptized into one body. One spirit, the Holy Ghost. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his.
even as ye are called in one hope. There's only one hope. That's the return of Jesus Christ. That's our blessed hope. One Lord. Number one. He O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. It is called the Shema. No more beautiful words are spoken. It is said in every temple of the Jewish faith. Every synagogue. Consider themselves Jews, whether messianic, liberal, conservative, ascetic, cableist, they all come with this one agreement. Heal Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. One faith. The faith that this was once delivered unto the saints. What is that faith? The faith that Jesus Christ came into this world. One faith. That Jesus not only did he come into this world, he was born of a virgin. He walked this earth 33 years. He ministered under the anointing of the Holy Ghost from ages 30 to 33. After that, he was arrested as a common criminal for treason. He was beaten, whipped, tortured, and all for all. He was bruised. Chastisement of our, of our peace was placed upon him. With some stripes, we are healed. All of us, like sheep, have walked with the Lord. Foot They live on a cross, so they make the other foot cross on a cross that he called the place of the skin. Finally, they buried him in a barge. And for three days, he stayed in the grave. He stayed in the grave, buried, went to hell, and preached deliverance to the captive. Led a captivity. Burial, resurrection, is the story that he tells. He ascended. He ascended. He ascended. And then he gave gifts unto men. Those men, those are what we call the fivefold. And he also did something so beautiful. He made a promise. Is his bride, the church, the bride of Christ, Israel, the bride of God, the Lord is God. One God and Father we've already established. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Now, here we're talking about the power of God operating through the believer. We're not talking about the unmerited favor of God, which is the beautiful definition that the grace of God which we all receive who come to Christ. But this grace here is talking about the operating power, always working, this energetic 
it's, it's keeps moving, it keeps moving, it's moving like a river, you know, always fresh. Wherefore he said, when he sitting on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. The Bible says that at the resurrection of Jesus, men, the spirit left their tombs and appeared unto them. The families of all his own, Pharisees, Sadducees, wonder, I truly wonder how they reacted to Moses and Aaron Joshua Caleb Samuel Caleb Bill And gave gifts unto men. Now he that now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same that also ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. This is talking about the death burial. There's the gospel right there. There's the gospel right there. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. The Bible talks about, the, the Bible declares the purpose of the ascension gifts. The ascension gifts are for what? The edifying of the body. That the saints could go out and fulfill the great commission. The uh, David's five smooth stones are representative of the fivefold ministry. Yet, the apostle and the prophet, foundational gifts, the evangelist, is, the message is Christ. The pastor nurtures the flock. The teacher comes and prepares that even a child may hear in this message. So we all come into the unity of faith. This is why the fivefold ministry is necessary. We have not come into the unity of the faith. No, we fight against each other as Methodists as Baptists, as Pentecostals, as Charismatics, as Third Wave, as, as Neo-Charismatics, as Neo-Pentecostals, we have all these labels. Yet God calls us for us to come into the unity of the faith. And of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, which we have not attained, until the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. What is the fullness of Christ? We won't see that till we get our glorified bodies. So until then, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, apostles, their work is powerful. Not only do they start churches, they go to Bible colleges, Bible institutes, they go on missionary journeys. They fulfill a special duty and a special with a special message from the Lord. Prophets, their message is foundational also, but they are what I call the tillers of the ground. Before they can plant anything, they have to weed the garden. They have to get rid of the weed seed attitude. They have to 
pluck up, pull down strongholds, that we may hear what thus saith the Lord. The evangelist's message is Christ, no matter what it is there. The message is Christ. Pastor, he the prophet God. Paul told the Ephesians elders in the book of Acts, feed the flock of God. The things I say this is no longer for today. My Bible teaches me in Romans 11, 29 that the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. How dare you? God said he set in the church first apostles, secondarily prophets, third teachers. God said he put it in there. Church, you have no right to say God took out of his church, what he placed in it. For the word of God shall not return to him more. For he is not a man that he should lie, nor is the son of man that he should repent. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning. Crafters whereby they lie and wait to see. The Bible speaks of so many apostles besides the twelve, besides Paul. Stephen just read your Bible. It speaks of so it speaks of prophets. You need to read your Bible. Evangelist Philip. Philip the evangelist. He had miracles in his ministry. What happens? Do we not want the miraculous in the church anymore? Do we not want the supernatural in the church anymore? Do we not want the spiritual gifts in the church anymore? Or, or are we surprised when it happens? That's why we're so surprised when we see a move of God, an obvious move. Because we don't want, this is why the ministry of apologetics is necessary, so you don't take it with these winds of doctrines. By the slight of men, cunning crafters, where they lie and wait to deceive. This is why the Bible teaches us in 2 Corinthians 11 that Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. His ministers transform themselves into ministers of righteousness. I'm telling you the right thing. It's going to live up to a calendar. This is why Christ said the Pharisees and the Sadducees sit in Moses' seat. And he told the people to listen to them. Why? Because they were the spiritual leadership. This is the reason why these gifts, these offices, they're not titles. And I'm tired of hearing preacher after preacher call these titles. The Bible calls them gifts. So somebody wrong. I know the Bible's right. So somebody wrong. But speaking the truth in love. We must always speak the truth in love. If we, if love is not, the love of God in our hearts shed abroad by the Holy Ghost is not the reason why we speak this truth, you need to sit down and shut up. Not because you can say you know something. God said. God said. God appointed in the church. May it grow into all him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. We have to become more like him. We have to think like him, talk like him, work like him, do like him. And don't tell me you can't because Jesus said, the works I do, him to believe, the works I do, 
him that believe he shall also do and greater work shall he do because I go to my father. Don't believe me, read John chapter 14. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compact by that which every joint supply, which every joint supply. It didn't say that we got the right to, to judge God. Or judge people. This person ain't, that person ain't. If you don't have the gift of discerning of spirits, shut your mouth when you speak against God's people. You find yourself in violation of touch not my anointed, uh, demon prophets, uh, no harm. Who wants to go into that? I want to be there. According to the effectual working, see, again, the spirit always working. Always working. Always working. Love in the in the in the bond of peace. Always working. In the measure of every part. Make it increase of the body until the edifying of itself in love. We start need to stop fighting ourselves according to the, on doctrinal manners. We need to find ourselves. Strengthening ourselves. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. You need to sharpen one another. Not degrade one another. Now let's go on with it. I'm going to go into the camera. And it says, God has brought about many wonderful, a wonderful unity, and it is the responsibility of believers to maintain that unity under the anointed power of God. In other words, you can't do this in yourself. I don't care how many commentaries you read. I don't care how many Sunday school books you read. I don't care. As long as you must pray, you must get a relationship with God. You must study prayerfully, study his word. Get an understanding that only comes through having a beautiful, intimate relationship with him through prayer and study of his word. That you may receive a revelation, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Back in Ephesians. See, all of this, this whole book from Genesis to Revelation, all speaks of Christ, speaks of his wondrous things that he will do, speaks of his death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and second coming. And if we do not understand those primary things, we can never grow. We'll always be drinking the milk and never Tend to eat some meat. The consistent reference to the church as the body of Christ, with Jesus being the head, reemphasizes that the church is a living organism designed and destined to maneuver and grow and work with the Holy Spirit as the body's life source flowing through and in every part. If you're the tiny fingernail. Oh, if you're this beard, this mustache, this nose, that hair, that head, the forehead, the ears, the neck, all the way down to the foot, the sole of the foot. You fit somewhere in this body, and you need to maintain that portion of the body. This body is united as one. The primary call of the right of Paul to the church is to call to unity. The recipients of the message of the letter, including us today, should make every effort to maintain unity of the bond of the spirit 
and the bond of peace. The sevenfold use of the word one forms the center of a poetic statement regarding the church's unity. The list leads forth from the oneness of a unified body and culminates with the oneness of God. Just as earlier parts of the book of Ephesians have identified God as the source of the church's identity, likewise, here we are taught that the unity of the church reflects the oneness of God. This is why we strive to walk worthy of our calling. We reflect and should, should with humility and love strive to keep unity and peace in the church. Every one of us has a divine call on our lives. This divine calling is not self-serving, serving, but designed to draw people to Christ and thus fulfill the needs of the body. United. Verse 7 picks back up the unifying theme mentioned in verse 6, showing that the one God desires to be in us through the Holy Spirit. In other words, the body is not for a person, but the person is for the body. We serve the church. Too many of us have wanted the church to serve us, to be there whenever we need her. Following on the heels of verses 4 through 6, verse 7 brings the thought of oneness back to the individual experience. The believer's experience of God's grace relates to the logical of the oneness of the body. The measure mentioned by Paul in verse 7 is immeasurable by human standards, for it expresses an unconditional love toward us. Some take verse 9 to be a reference to the death on the cross and a visit into hell. Others count this as a descent from heaven to earth. Whatever your accepted interpretive belief may be, we should not downplay or miss the fact that Jesus came for us, died for us, and ascended for us and is now sitting. With the power to dispense what we need when we need it. The power of the text is that it states that he gave gifts to the mankind. This means the gifts <coughs> have already been dispensed. We call on Jesus for power when the power has already been dispensed. The Holy Spirit is active, always active in our lives. He has been dispensed and released to guide us to the full work and glory. It is our job as leaders to equip the saints with the truth of the gospel that they do not hear a false doctrine. And pay attention. That's why there's so many cults out there now drawing the men away. Unfortunately, it is a growth in cults. But the Bible says that there will be a drawing away because people are hearts are waxing cold and getting cold. Don't believe me? Go on YouTube and watch some of these folk who proclaim Jesus yet deny the power thereof. The truth is in Jesus. Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord, our Messiah, our Savior. If we will go in that blessed, blessed boldness and strength and power of the Holy Ghost, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, who is all and through all and in all of us, that grace given to us, the gift is according to the grace. Work in the area of grace that God has gifted you to go and watch the body grow, strengthen itself in love. God bless you and keep you. Now, may the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost rest, rule, and abide with you all. Until we all meet again, in Jesus' name.